Hello, hello. How we doing, everyone? Let's see who's in the house. I'm gonna just get started with the clubhouse room. Get that opened up. All right. So we are live on Clubhouse. We're live on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, all at once. Super excited. I've got my friend Alex with us this evening. What's up, Alex? How you doing, my friend? Hey, Enzo. How's it going? Good, good, good. Everything is going solid, man. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, taking some time to um, give some value. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys don't know who Alex is, most of you do that are tuning in on, on YouTube right now. A lot of you have seen him and some of our collaborations and videos we've done in the past. But I consider Alex a friend and business partner. Uh, we've been in business. Um, it started off where I was originally his client and I'm still his client till this, till this day. Uh, that formed into a very strong uh, friendship and we are now you know, in the works of uh, actually building up a potential business, uh, a new business partnership together in the real estate investing space. So we're, we're super excited about that. We're learning more about each other, how we operate, how we function, our finances, uh, you know, personal life, all of it. And uh, it's been a very good experience. That's my perspective. Uh, Alex has helped me make a lot of money. Um, but you know, it's not just the money, it's, it's the impact, the results that he has helped me produce for, for my clients. So a lot of you that are watching that are clients, either in the manifesto, one-on-one, -on -one, um, or you're not a client with me, but you're a client with Alex just from watching my content. I know I've got a few people like that and uh, just had a great experience so far. So I want to give you the floor, Alex, for a couple minutes just to uh, introduce yourself, um, Give us a little background, what you do, how you do it, and then we're going to get into the main topic. Uh, the title of this video is, you know, the Vault Conference uh, 2021, uh, you know, pregame work, tips for success, how to, you know, maximize in-person events again, right? It's like this became foreign over the last year and a half, uh, but now that we're, we're starting to see more in-person live events, both uh, live in person and a hybrid virtual option. It is good for us business owners, people who network, to start <laughs> building up those networking skills again, those communication skills, because I know for one, I am super rusty. So I wanted to create this video and uh, put all my tips, all my strategies on how I maximize um, in-person events, business, networking, all types of seminars, workshops, whatever it is. So, Alex, I give you the floor. What's up? How you doing? Yep, thank you for having me, man. And I want to dive right into it, but I'll first, like you said, do a quick introduction. Yeah. Uh, so I think Denzel and I met about three and a half years ago through networking, and I'll touch on that a little bit later. But, um, yeah, my name's Alex Alibran. I have a marketing and consulting company. That's mainly what I worked with Denzel on, but I'm also starting a general contracting company. Um, and Denzel and I are cooking something up that'll probably be announced at a later date. But um, yeah, I'm still a young guy, like Denzel, 23. My first business was at 18 years old. The night I graduated from high school, I started a healthy catering and meal prep company. And so that was my first kind of foray into entrepreneurship. And since then, I haven't really had a job. I went from that business to this marketing company. That's been going really well. And Denzel and I, are, it's kind of unique because we're both young, we're both doing well, but at the same time, when we first met, we both were in a similar stage in our business where we both were still trying to figure things out. Like we weren't, it's not like I was already doing well and I was trying to help him or vice versa. So we kind of grew up on the same track together and we're both young as well. And so, yeah, him and I are a great fit, but I think also to touch on a little bit about what I wanted to discuss tonight is that we didn't really go into working together just based off of a transactional type of relationship. We first met just to see like how we liked each other, 
do we have the same vibe? What's our family life like? Even, you know, with religion. So I think first we clicked on all those things. And just on a personal basis, I think we get along really well. So like he said, we're friends first. And of course, business partners after. And then after that, that's where the business partnership really flourished because we knew everything was so solid on the personal side. And so I'll touch on that a little bit later, but that was kind of my introduction. And like I said, I think you and I leading into, you know, this specific topic, it makes sense because we didn't meet and immediately start to try to transact. We just tried to get a feel for each other, get a vibe. And that's why I think it's gone so well. It's going to continue to do so well because we started on that first sort of personal foundation on the same level. Yeah. And that's one of the main reasons why I, chose you um, because of the way we originally built our relationship. And now that we're attending, you know, a three, four day conference together uh, with a relatively well-known individual, if you guys don't know who uh, Patrick Bet David is, you can type that in on Google or really any platform. He'll pop right up. But what he's mostly known for is his YouTube channel called Valuetainment. Um, and he's got a podcast called the Patrick Bed David podcast. And uh, on Valuetainment, it's really all about business owners, entrepreneurs, really uh, that are starting up, wanting to build financial freedom, wanting to build successful businesses. And he provides all tips and different strategies and methods of you know, operating. And to go even a step further, he's also very, very uh, uh, well connected, let's say, where he brings on, he does these really cool interviews where he'll interview, you know, ex mafia bosses, um, he'll interview top tier CEO, maybe even billionaire uh, executives, all from all walks of life, all different types of people, both in the business world, in the political world, uh, in the underground world, uh, cybersecurity. I mean, this guy covers so many different topics. And uh, I think I put, <laughs> Alex, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think I put you on uh, Patrick Bet David. Uh, you already knew about him, but you started watching him a little bit more once I brought up the conference to you about, I, you know, I think this would be super valuable because unlike very common structured business networking events. Typically, if you're going to some kind of three-day, four-day workshop, this is just my experience from the dozens of business seminars and workshops I've been to, there's always been a group of panel speakers, and, and it'll be the same for the Vault Conference. There's these group of speakers. They're strategically put together throughout a three-day, four-day, two-day event, and each one of these speakers will present the topic. During their topic, they'll have something to sell, something to offer you. Run to the back of the room, you know, make your sell, and then see what happens, right? And the goal is for you to attend the event, get the resources you need, make the connections, and you know, typically buy something at the, at the event. Typically it's a digital service or, an, or a coaching service, something along that nature, whenever you're attending these uh, business events. Now, in addition to that, it can be very uh, hype. There's a lot of hype, I think, involved. Um, I've been to some sales workshops. I've been to uh, 10x events, and typically there's you know this this a lot of high energy, which is important. You need it absolutely. But I think there might be something different about this guy Patrick Bet David and the way he operates. He just doesn't give me that vibe. Now, I expect to be sold something when I oh, arrive. Really? You think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I expect it. Now, if it doesn't happen, I will be blown because I am under the assumption that this is the type of event where this guy is bringing in some, I mean, high caliber individuals in the niche expertise that they have. And I feel like it's just going to be genuine conversations. People are going to be on stage. We're going to be in the audience. And we're just going to be like really just vibing off each other. And so that's what I'm hoping for. I don't expect a, a hype uh, run to the back of the room sales approach. I, I really doubt that's the case. 
you know, if you go to like a Grant Cardone event, maybe even a Tony Robbins, there you'll get that kind of structure. But this guy, I think he's doing something different, and you know, would love your your take, uh, Alex. When I first brought up the the conference to you, what were your first initial impression when you you know went to the website and you looking this guy up and just to see the structure of it? Um, give me your take on on that, and what you're hoping to you know get out of the event. Yeah, so as you mentioned, Denzel, I initially heard of Patrick Bed David Dalutainment, but it's like one of those recommended YouTube videos that come up that you put in your watch later folder or playlist, right. but you never get to it. So I always knew of him, and I always knew he seemed like a legit guy, just never dove into his content too much. Uh, but then you brought up the conference, it was coming up pretty soon, pretty local to us, and so right. I looked at the website, and I think based on the website, my opinion is that it's going to be the opposite, where it's not going to be this salesy thing because the website, no offense to them, but it looked a little bit rudimentary. Like it didn't look super funnily or high tech or anything like that. Yeah. It just looked pretty standard basic. Like here's what you're going to get. Here's the price. Done. Bye now. Yeah. Very simple. <laughs> Done. And so I like that. And then I did more research about Patrick, but David, and I think also he's not going to look to make it a sales fest because this isn't his business, right? Like you mentioned, Tony Robbins, Greg Cardone, great content. Right, it's probably right. fun to go to. I've seen Tony Robbins, I've seen Grant Cardone live, but the biggest thing is that that's their business. Correct. Being a business coach, personality, influencer, whatever you'd like to call it, but that's yeah. their business. High, so they have high to sell ticket. something to make an income. Yeah, high something ticket high coaching ticket. events. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Like that's how they make their money. But Patrick Ben David, I mean, his podcast, I don't know if he makes money off it. I don't think so. He has his big insurance company. I think he's been doing that for a while, right? So I think with this type of conference, it's going to be different. Number two, I also think it's because the entry fee wasn't cheap. I mean, for the general admission, basic, basic, lowest cost ticket, you're looking at, I mean, not a thousand, but under a thousand, I think seven, eight hundred dollars. Like that's still not cheap versus other conferences, they let you in for free, right? So once you're free, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or a conference, you're the product, right? You're going to get sold at some point. Whether on Facebook, it's a Facebook ad or a business conference. It's a high ticket coaching program. But if you're paying $800, I think I might be mistaken, but I think that's sort of a barrier to entry in terms of, are you a serious entrepreneur? Are you really willing to be open-minded to learn from, like you said, these high caliber type of experts? And at the same time, are you willing to pay this fee in exchange for maybe being sold up front, like you're saying, like when you walk in, one thing, but not constantly every single speaker. Right. So in my opinion, I think that's how it's going to go. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree with that. And that's my that's my hopes. But I guess just because of um, the dozens and dozens of mm-hmm. conferences and workshops and uh, business events I've went, I've never known anything different other than here's a high caliber group of speakers that are successful and I'm, I'm programmed to get to know this speaker within say 30 to 45 minutes or maybe under an hour depending on how long they have to talk and I'm, I'm just mentally preparing for that $5,000 program, that $20,000 program and it's gonna be on sale for 50% for the first five people who we'll get up in the chair and go to the back of the room. Like I'm already yeah. prepared for that kind of mentality uh so to not have that is going to be such a relief i think personally where hey if i really want to do business with you i will absolutely do business with you you don't have to you know uh uh, sell me on say right then and there and if you know you're the first five people and i get it i mean i hey i've done it in my own business where i have a select amount of spaces select amount of you know uh, uh, positions for people to work with me one-on-one and then the price goes up later so that's all I know so to understand that there could be pen- potentially a different approach is something very humbling and it, it's gonna be a, a big learning experience for me and me putting this video together uh, with you I think will really help other up-and-coming content creators, coaches, consultants, influencers, etc., uh, be able to get a different approach and potentially use this video as a, as a template. So what I'd like to do, I've t- I took a bunch of notes before we even 
uh, got started. And I'm, you know, I'm going to go through a couple of things. I want to let you go first. And uh, I'm going to take notes on the whiteboard here. We're not going to spend too much time uh, because I want to make sure uh, that I leave some time for some Q&A from you guys. If you guys want to jump on Clubhouse, ask me a question. Or you're more than welcome to, you know, jump in the comments. If you got a specific question, it could not be about the Vault Conference, about business. It could be totally about what I do, you know, velocity banking, paying off debt, infinite banking, whatever it is. We can get into that, but I want to respect Alex's time and what he's here for to support me with what we're doing on how to best prepare for a networking or business type of event and some of the things to just be aware of so that you don't go in you know, blindsided or, or have a bad experience, let's just say. So Alex, what are maybe two, three things that you do personally, whether it's money related, mindset, before you attend the event, your decision making process, anything on that, and I'm gonna take notes as you speak. Okay, gotcha. So I would say the biggest number one priority for everybody listening, including myself, is that you have to go with the mindset of, I'm not here with an agenda. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm not trying to pitch anything. I'm looking to build relationships. That's the number one key because, like I mentioned, Denzel, when you and I first met, it wasn't a transactional thing from the jump. Of course, over time, you have to conduct business, but once the personal foundation is there, once somebody already likes what you're about, they like your values, you know, everything that you're about, family, fitness, whatever you guys find something in common, conducting business becomes a lot easier. So I would say the best strategy is to not have a strategy, is to have no agenda. Just look to meet interesting people and build some relationships. Don't look to pitch or sell or have a 60 second elevator pitch, anything like that. Because a lot of the time people, they don't wanna be sold, right? Everybody has that sort of defense mechanism where they know somebody's trying to sell them something, they automatically turn off and they might you know, politely say no thank you, but that's gonna be their first impression. Like, wow, this person met me and you know, within 45 seconds, they were trying to get me to make a commitment or move to the next step of their sales process or something like that. And that's just not how people, you know, it'd be like going up to a girl, asking her to marry you at the bar, instead of saying, hey, like, do you wanna go out to eat first? <laughs> Let's get to know each other. Then marriage can come on maybe a year down the road or two. But I think that's the biggest thing is that you have to come in with that strategy of not having an agenda, not having a strategy just being relaxed, being yourself, and you'll eventually find the right people. You'll find your group at that conference. So I'd say that's number one. Nice, anything else you wanna add to it? And then I'm gonna chime in. Mm -hmm. So I'd say number two, you do have to look the part, right? Especially Denzel and I, we're younger people. Luckily he has the beard. I have no beard, I have a baby (laughs) face. So I'm 23, I look 19. So it's good and bad, but at the same time I have to, look serious people are you know i'm looking to conduct business for any of my companies maybe looking to get some clients down the road but i'm still looking to build relationships and have these people that are double my age take me seriously so with that i have to look the part i have to doesn't mean you have to dress expensively that's the thing you could go to h&m and you can get some nice slim fitting clothing that looks nice it feels nice you you know fit well into it and it costs a hundred dollars for the whole outfit shoes pants and everything Um, So I say you have to look the part. You have to just do your best, right? Moisturizer, gel in your hair, whiten your teeth, get some nice shoes, pants, shirt. Like just do your best to look the part, Um, especially if you're younger or you're starting out in something. Because a lot of the time, the image, um, you have to act as if, right? So if your image, if you want to be successful or you're just starting a business, you have to dress and look like you're already at that point to be taken seriously. And like I said, especially if you're starting out or you're younger, these already knocks a few points off your credibility just by having that age or, you know, not the success in business at that point. So I would say those are the two biggest things. What do you think, Denzel? Love it. Love it. I like that. I really appreciate it. And so I'm going to take that. I've already jotted those two main points. No sales agenda, basically. Build relationships at the event. Seek to build 
rather than seek to sell, right? Mm -hmm. So seek to build rather than seek to sell and, and look the part, you know? Try to get a haircut, try to, you know, present yourself worthy of somebody's time. Time is money. So let's, let's be mindful of that. Uh, so what I'm, I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go into some uh, uh, technical things that I've written down and we're gonna, we're gonna open it and expand it. And like I said, if anybody's got questions, you know, throw them in now, uh, engage and let me know your thoughts. So um, this is in no particular order, it's just what came to mind. And this is how I've been operating. And I just wanted to give you guys a visual of the success that I've had going to dozens and dozens of business networking events um, attending these. So uh, for those that are watching, I've got a stack of business cards. These are all relationships that I've built at networking events, you know? So my, my intent was always to collect data to build a relationship, to then nurture that relationship, to then serve any way I possibly can. And if it leads to a sell or a sale, you know, or, or some kind of opportunity, then great. If not, that's okay. That's okay too. Um, because it's important that you really know who you're doing business with. I mean, you, you don't want to just do business with anybody just for the sake of, of making money. We don't want to seek money, right? We, wanna, we want to seek to serve, and, and I'd go a step further, you know, we want to seek the kingdom. Uh, we want to build relationships with people that are kingdom-minded, kingdom-oriented, or just from a logical sense, take away the spiritual stuff, just from a logical sense, that have good morals, ethics, and values that you can stand behind, that you can stand with, right? And build from. So with that, the first thing I wrote down was establish priorities for the event. Okay? What do I mean by that? That's just simply like ironing out where is this going to be at, uh, how long, how much time do I want to put into this, how motivated, how invested am I in this particular event, uh, really being open and honest with yourself. You know, what do you want? Uh, you know, do you want to make sales? That's okay. That's a good feeling to have, sure. But how do we do that authentically, right? Effectively, especially in, in today's environment. The next thing is uh, have your parameters in place. Okay, I just wrote that down. Just have some, some rules, okay? Like, am I going with a partner, with a business partner? When I get there, am I going to spend all my time with a business partner that I already know? Or am I going to strategically say, yeah, you know, I'll see you at the event, but let's, let's you know, divide and conquer, so to speak. And let's equally uh, maybe set a game, how many new relationships we can make or how many new connections we can make, how many people we can talk to. You know, we're exercising our communication and speaking skills at the end of the day. Even if it doesn't lead to a sell, uh, you're, you're building your communication skills, right? And that's really helpful. The third thing is map out the cost, right? How much does it cost to go to this event? I can tell you from experience, um, one of the very first business workshops that I went to was, I was 18, I think I was 18 or 19 years old. It was a three-day women's uh, business empowerment workshop Kevin Harrington was there from Shark Tank, billionaire. Uh, Laurel Langmire, multimillionaire. A uh, lot of other well-known speakers. This is, you know, pre-COVID, so everybody was, you know, hugging and kissing and all that stuff. No mask and all that. And people, I was broke at the time. Didn't have no strategy. Super broke. Excited to learn and also make sell, make some sales, uh, talk to some people and sell them what I had to offer. And uh, let me tell you, it was a struggle personally because I was broke at the time, didn't have the money. It was a, I believe I got a free ticket, 
but the event was roughly 40 to 50 minutes away. I took a tri-rail, I took a train, right? Wow. South Florida, okay, we're in, this, is, this event was in uh, up Palm Beach or West Palm Beach area. I live in uh, Broward County, so it's one county below, and that's roughly 40, 50 minutes distance driving, train a little bit longer, and this is a three-day event. Each day, in the blistering heat, with whatever collar shirts and, and pants and shoes I could put together, I just, you know, if there's anything I did have was motivation. I was motivated. And, uh, you know, with the little money I had, I took a train to and from each and every day. I, I believe I brought lunch, carried my own lunch, had some snacks, water, tried to spend as, as little money as possible because typically when you go to these big business events, it's typically at a high-end resort hotel of some sort. So the closest restaurants are going to be four, you know, four-star, five-star uh, restaurants. It's going to be a little difficult to find something cheap. You know, there's always a Starbucks and... Uh, you're going to end up, you know, spending quite a bit of money. So that was the no strategy, but I was super motivated. And, um, you know, I didn't make a single sale because my approach was terrible. Like, I was just gathering cards, but I wasn't building relationships. I wasn't connecting with people. I wasn't sharing a, a story that they could relate to, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're talking to other human beings. What are their needs? What are they working on? What did they come for? These are great questions to, you know, stir up a conversation when you're at lunch or breakfast in the morning before the event starts, while you're waiting online. There's so many opportunities to connect with people. And the last thing you want to be doing is on your phone, ignoring the people around you that pay just as much money to be there with you. Right, so you want to keep that into consideration. Um, some, some technical things. Alex mentioned it, dress your best. That's what I put, look the part. That's what Alex said. I totally believe in that. Um, even if you do not have the finances to buy a custom-made suit, tailor-made, no, nobody's asking you to you know, go that far. If you've got the money, sure. Go ahead and do it. That's a great investment. Me personally, I just invested in a tailor-made, you know, suit, head to toe, you know, because I'm, I'm at a different level. But when I was broke, I had three or four collar shirts that I could rock. I had two uh, 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 dress slacks, and I had one pair of black shoes, and I rotated it, you know, so I didn't wear the same shirt each day. I just rotated the shirts, same belt, changed my socks, changed my drawers, and, you know, uh, had a haircut, 15, 20 bucks for a haircut, and that was it. That was within my, what, parameters, right, and my, and my priorities. So that's important. You, you, you look at your numbers, right? We're big on that. We got to know our numbers, you know, taking a look at the board real quick. Got to know your four major numbers, income, expense, debt, and cash flow, where you at, how much cash you have on hand, debt tools, um, anything that you're planning on, you know, using for the event or, or technically spending, right? So that's important. Now, some, some technical things, we're going to get a little bit deeper now. So I, I put to when you arrive at the event, you know, sit in a different spot each time if there's no assigned seats. This is like gold. Every event that I've gone to that was not assigned seatings, I would sit in the back, sit in the front, sit in the middle, sit on the edge to always, you know, talk to somebody new, right? I didn't want to just, I'm not going to spend five grand to attend an event to, you know, hit it off with one person, and that's great and all, but I also don't want to take away from them by consuming my time with just because we clicked right away. Like, I want to give them the time to talk to other people, and I'm going to talk to other people. And then when the event's over, I can connect, have a conversation, say, who'd you connect with? 
How many relationships did you make? How many connections? Uh, you know, did you find a tax person? Did you find a lawyer? Did you find a doctor? Did you find a self-made entrepreneur, a you know, content creator, a marketing, marketing guru, or sales expert, business coach, life coach, right? All those different things. Really, really important stuff. Uh, so sit in a different spot each time if there's no assigned seats. Next thing is to preferably you want to stay in the same hotel. You don't want to be making uh, those, those, you know, taking the train to and from each and every day. That's, that's a time killer. And you are kind of missing out on more opportunities to uh, connect with someone in the elevator, the walk to the, the big conference room, the walk out of the room, the walk to the bathroom. So many, like you wanna be fully immersed. Would you agree with that, Alex? You wanna be fully immersed when you're at the event. Would you agree with that? Exactly, I would say, as you mentioned, it depends on the numbers, depends on the finances, but if you're already gonna do it, if, you, if like we're going to this conference, it's a pretty expensive entry fee, you might as well yeah. just go all in and stay at the hotel. And look, it's we got it through the conference, like the room wasn't crazy expensive. It's, I think, usually $300 plus, but we got a room for 175 um, at this hotel and through the conference. So it's not a crazy expensive thing, it's a business expense, so it's a write-off as well. And I think, as Denzel mentioned, there's gonna be a lot of great late night stuff at the bar, the restaurant, and that's really where you're gonna meet people in their element. When they're relaxed, they had a few drinks, right. they having some good food, that's where they really wanna meet people. But if you're on the train back home to Broward County or Palm Beach or Miami or wherever, you're gonna miss out on those opportunities. So if the finances, as Denzel mentioned, if they apply, if it works out that way, um, you wanna pull the trigger and do that. Definitely, definitely. I know me personally, now that I've learned from attending business events, you know, it's okay if I don't have the finances, it's okay to say, you know, I'm not going to attend this because, you know, I don't want to be stressed out about money. I don't want to go into debt with the hopes that I'm going to make a sale by, by pitching somebody in the elevator or right next to me in my seat because that's going to ruin their experience as well. Because they're not there necessarily to be sold by the attendees by any means. If anything, they expect to be sold by the speakers that are there, that are on stage. The last thing they want, and I've learned this, me personally, the last thing I want is somebody walking up to me and, you know, shoving a business, business card in my face after 20 seconds of talking. Like, even if it was fast or on the Starbucks line, hey, we might see each other again, you know? You've got my name, you can look me up, right? It's social media and, you know, maybe we'll connect again. But, you know, the last thing people want is, you know, business cards being shoved in your face, um, you know, come come to dinner with me, and but it's not authentic, you, you, know, you feel like you're gonna get sold by the attendee and the people on stage and you're like, oh my God, I, I got to throw money everywhere now. So it, that can be a little uh, uh, distasteful you know, and that can have a, a poor reputation, I think, on events as a whole. So I think that's important. The next thing I was going to mention was to definitely invite people to dinner in an authentic way, especially if you've got the money, you know, especially if you've prepared your costs, you know, you've, you've established a budget, you know, a parameter of how much money I'm, I'm likely to spend. And here's something I don't want to go over this. It's nice to spend 10, 12 hours with people engaging and learning so much to then have a dinner with somebody and, and open the notes and share notes. Hey, what, what was your biggest takeaway? Oh, well, you know, when Bet David was talking about this or when, you know, this other speaker was talking about that and when she said this, it just really clicked and oh my God, I really like it. Oh, that's nice, you know. So I think inviting people to dinner is, is a... Not necessarily a, a strategy, but it's it's a nice thing to do if you can do it, you know. And when I say invite people to dinner, that means you paying. I don't know if that might have went over somebody's head, but that's part of my protocol. If I invite you to dinner, you know, um, I'm gonna pay. Now, if it was a group, like we're talking one to one, like if I'm gonna invite somebody to dinner one to one, I'm paying. You know, hey, I. I want to treat you to dinner. We've been having a ton of fun. I think we hit it off. I think you've got some things that I want to learn about your business 
There's some things I think I could share about your business, maybe potential collaboration down the road. Come to dinner with me. Let's have a nice steak, you know, and, and talk it up, chat it up. But in a group setting, a little bit different. You know, if you coordinate, hey, group of us have decided we're going to have dinner over here. Would you like to be a part of that? Then everybody individually pays. Unless there's a hot shot that wants to take care of the whole table, then that's great too. That's not bad. You know, uh, <laughs> how do you feel about that, Alex? You know, would you say, do you agree with what I said there or would you say it differently? Yeah, I, I I'd agree with your addendum because at first I'm like, I'm not paying for a whole group. Like that is right. I, I, not even outside of my budget, but outside of my, my values. But like you said, if I'm inviting a guy or a girl or one individual to dinner, I'll pick up the tab. No problem. But if it's a group, then I might buy somebody that I'm, I'm really looking to talk to. I'll buy them a drink or I'll, yeah. I'll buy them dessert or something, something like that. Um, that's pretty light. But yeah, I would say if somebody also wants to pick up the entire tab, if they want to be a baller, then Good for them. Good but for them. Like I'm going to let them do it. Me, yeah, I'll, I'll let them go ahead. Trust me. That's fine with me. Hey. But I think, like you're saying, the late night thing, because I'm not a big whatsoever smoker, drinker, whichever, right. but at the same time, I can smoke a cigar. I don't love it, but I can. Even with drinks, I'm not a big drinker whatsoever. I drink a few times a year, but if somebody wants to have a drink, I'll have it with them. And that's where sometimes it's just a socially it's a social lubricant it just makes sense where sometimes somebody it's late night the restaurant's closed what we can just do sit and drink some water and chat but if it's like hey let's let's get a quick drink or smoke a cigar that's where i'm like okay i'm willing to do those things and so i think um the dinner thing is a great idea but again it's staying at the hotel you're going to be having those opportunities to slip into the bar with a group of millionaires or multi-millionaires <laughs> yeah. and have a quick drink or smoke a cigar or even have a quick meal, like you're saying. But um, I think it all ties together with not coming to the conference broke because then you're not going to be able to enjoy it. You're going to be kind of one foot in, one foot out. Correct. And trying to just be open to any and all opportunities, whatever may come up. Yeah, it can really stress you out if you attend one of these you know, high ticket events, you, you, you basically spent every dollar on the ticket. Um, I don't think that's the best strategy. Now, I know people have done, I've done it personally, and it didn't result in, in really the, the best way compared to some of the more recent events that I've gone to. You know, I went to a 10X Growth Con in Las Vegas. That was a, my God, that was like a three, $4,000 ticket. And then I attend another 10X event here in, in Miami that was a $5,000 ticket. It's a lot of money, five grand. Not to mention the cost of the flights, the hotel, the Uber, and the three meals a day. If I'm staying on site, you know, technically I'm going to be eating out almost every meal unless I pack, you know, a shake uh, or something like that, alternative, you know, meals that, that's, you know, different. But for the most part, you're going to be buying yourself food and maybe others. So creating those, those budgets to you know, have a good idea of what is to be expected so that you don't have to worry about that and, and really just focus on building the relationships. Like Alex said, no sales agenda, just truly uh, connecting with another human being without the need to sell them something. Like try to think back when you were in middle school you know, or high school or even elementary. Like, you sat next to somebody in class, you started talking, you hit it off, and you become best friends. And there's no monetary exchange there. It, you're just genuinely hanging out with them, talking with them because you like their presence. You like the, the, the values, the way they talk, the way they, their mindset is. You, know, you, you resonate with them. So you come in with that mindset, kind of like a, a child mindset. You just want to say hello to everybody and just you know, be be high energy, my goodness, that is going to make everybody else's experience that much better. And that's something that I learned about myself, especially when there's nervous people that don't know how to network, that don't know how to, maybe they're more introverted. I know I'm an introvert, but put me in the right environment, I flip to, I flip to extrovert very quickly. You, you play that salsa music, that merengue, that bachata, the reggaeton. Even the rap music, the hip hop, man, you get a beat going, you're going to see me out there, right? Very quickly. I'm not afraid. So you put me in the right environments, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But for the most part, we, we all have our nervousness areas. And if you get around people that have such good energy, 
Like that's why I love going to these uh, business conferences in person because I'm able to feed off of other people's energy. Very, very, it's such a rewarding thing when somebody just comes up to me and, hey, how you doing, man? Like your shoes, my goodness, those are, those are awesome. And what's your name, Denzel? What? Cool name. And, and what, do you, what do you do? Oh, man, that's awesome. You know, I, I got this going on and I'm going to be going to this thing. We're going to have a group of, uh, uh, you know, a couple shots after the event's over. Come with us, you know, and it's just, it's just so exciting, right? So keep that in mind. Now, the other thing I would say is if the conference is at a different location, like it's not in your local area, you have to actually fly, I would recommend flying in the day before so that you can check into the hotel, relax, get a good night's rest, wake up early in the morning, and be one of the first people down there, <laughs> rather than people that typically fly in the day of the event, and you don't know if it, the flight's gonna get delayed, um, there's gonna be traffic, and you could find yourself rushing just to get to the event. Then you gotta check in your bags, but you can't even go into the room yet because check-in's not till four o'clock and the event starts at 10 or 12. So, you know, you can have a, a, a quite a few issues there. So I'd recommend flying in the day before. I think that's very, very, very key. And when I break down the, the cost, some of the most you know, notable things to be aware of, your hotel, your flights, car rental or Uber, Lyft, food, calculate the amount of meals. You know, if it's four days, three meals a day, 12 meals, okay? And then include drinks. Are you a drinker? Do you not drink? Do you drink water? You're gonna have to buy a bunch of waters might be smart to run down to the local pharmacy, buy a big jug of water, store it in the hotel room, right? Might be even wiser to uh, bring yourself a, uh, you know, big 20, 40, 60 ounce bottle, walk around with that at the event, stay hydrated. I can't tell you how many headaches I get whenever I go to these conferences. They're good headaches, but sometimes the, the headaches occur when I don't drink water because I'm sitting for six hours straight, you know, just, I'm like, oh my God, I'm being fed by all the speakers. I'm like, yes, 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 this is amazing. And then I'm forgetting, like, oh my God, I have to pee, you know? And I'm like, oh my goodness, I have to, I have to drink some water. I'm like parched as hell because I've just been listening the whole time. So I'm sure that's happened to people that are, that are listening that have attended events. Comment below if you've experienced, you know, major headaches or migraines when you attend these long-winded, we're talking 10, 12-hour workshops, I think that's something a lot of people don't expect, you know, especially new business owners. That's one thing I didn't expect. I was like, how long is this event? Shoot, I've, I've never done a shift that long in my life. 12, we're talking nine to nine at night, and that's just the event. You gotta get up early, right? So that's another hour or so. You gotta prepare, you gotta eat and there's breaks and stuff, but wow, can you imagine 10, 12 hours of people talking? That's a lot, that's intense, especially if you're not doing that often, especially if we're coming out of a freaking pandemic, worldwide pandemic, worldwide shutdown, where everybody's been home and cooped up. That can be a little tough to uh, get back out there again. It can be very draining to not only listen to people, but now you gotta talk to the people around you, right? So that can be pretty tough. Anything you wanna add there, Alex, in terms of we're, we're, we're focusing on cost, you know, the main, I said hotels, flights, Uber, Lyft, car rental, food, um, and also money saved to actually do business. Like I, I make sure that if I'm gonna be sold something, I, I'm gonna have the money to, to pay for it because that I'm a sucker sometimes. If you, if you sell me, you sold me. Hey, I'm a buy. I'm like, wow. I don't know what the heck she or he said, but that was good. That was good talk. They said something about some $5,000 programs and $3,000 program or, or a workshop that they're hosting and it's like $500 now if you sign up. It's 1000 tomorrow. That stuff gets me all the time. So I've, lear I've learned to put a little budget in place to do business that could be picking up the tab if i invite somebody to dinner 
or at least just making the gesture, you know, to cover somebody's tab, having the money to do that. But yeah, would you uh, would you add anything to that that I no. might have maybe missed? I would say it's better in that sense to go to less conferences in terms of volume, but be able to have the budget to, like you're saying, do everything the right way. Uber, Lyft, if someone wants to go out to eat at an expensive restaurant, you go. You have steak, appetizers, drinks, whatever. You just don't want to go to a lot of conferences and try to you know, make a wide blueprint or footprint. But at the same time, then you're scrimping and you're eating one meal a day and you're going to McDonald's every day and uh, not buying coffee and like you're not drinking water because you don't want to pay for it. That's just <laughs> counterintuitive at that point. You're not going right. to be at your best. So I'd say the biggest thing is if you're looking to network, that's great. But um, it's not great to do it on a budget, especially like Denzel mentioned, if you're flying, traveling, staying at a hotel and paying the conference ticket price, entry fee and paying food and all the cost of just being human, right? You have to eat, drink, et cetera. So I would say it's better to go to less conferences in terms of volume, but try to go to the right ones and be able to have the money to do it right. Just like vacations and just like conferences in this sense. Got it. Nice, nice. So the next thing I want to get into is uh, try to open up your schedule before and after the event, preferably, to, you know, before mentally to prepare yourself, and then after to be readily available to have phone calls and conversations with those people that you connected with. The worst thing you can do is what Denzel did, collect a bunch of business cards and give a bunch of business cards and never follow up with any of these people. I mean, there's like a thousand cards I have right here. A thousand different people, different business owners that I've spoken to and I was doing the strategy that Alex was just mentioning about volume events. Like I was attending any and every networking event possible. This is when I was single, right? And I think what's helped is being in a relationship and being able to divide my time equally with family, friends, personal relationship, God, business, and so forth. So it may not be wise financially and mentally draining to try to shoot for volume in terms of networking with people, right? Versus you research, say, five to 10 different business conferences that are occurring or happening throughout the year. Pick your favorite one that relates to your business the, the most, that's in alignment, you know, and you look at the speaker lineup and all that. And then save up as if you were saving for like a vacation because that's kind of like what you're doing. You're going on a little mini getaway, not a full vacation, but a mini getaway. You're getting away from personal relationship, family, friends, and you're investing into the growth of your business and yourself, you know, personal development. So very, very, very key there. Try to open up your schedule after the event for, you know, potential prospects. And that's where the deals and the sales occur after. And it may not happen on that first call. So don't, don't go hard with it right away. Now, I know Grant Cardone would think differently. He's like, hard sell, hard sell. And Hey, it might work for some, not for all. I don't take that approach. I prefer to educate and share and teach. And then eventually you get to a point where you know, like, and trust me. I'm, I'm willing to wait, you know, and have that patience rather than got to get it now, got to get it here, got to get it there type of mentality. And I think there's, you know, a balance for both. Um, what I want to get into now, and we're going to wrap it up, uh, Alex, your main goals for the Vault Conference specifically. And for those that are watching, I think you can still buy tickets to attend the Vault Conference. You just Google that, vaultconference.com or Vault Conference 2021. Um, or you can just look up Patrick Bet David, go to his website. You'll see the event. I still think there are some tickets available that you can purchase and come meet Alex and myself in person. Typically, I always tend to meet a client or two in person whenever I uh, travel, which is so much fun because I get to put a face to the name, you know, uh, or I should say a face to the voice because I'm hearing you 
when I'm doing your when I'm doing all these consulting calls, but I never see you. Um, so yeah, uh, Alex, what are your main goals for the Vault Conference 2021? So I'll tie my goals to what you said earlier about when you were a kid, you would meet somebody in class, like you said, elementary, middle school, high school, you would hit it off because there's no agenda. So I'll tie that to what my goal is. And it's not just to have fun, but it's to learn, build relationships and have fun. I mean, like you're saying, it is a mini vacation. It's a bit of a getaway. It's a nice hotel. We're going to see Dustin Poirier just fought Conor McGregor twice, three times total. Billy Bean, the guy from Moneyball. Like there's a lot of Patrick Bitt David many great speakers so it's a fun time and i think tying it back to building relationships everybody's at their best when they're having fun when they're having a good time they're at their best in terms of their energy personality um whether they're even playing sports like if you're having fun playing basketball playing football you're gonna play better so i think for me the goal is to learn from these experts that are double triple my age have you know, a lot of money, but also a lot of success, not just in business, but also life, their personal life, family life that I can learn from, right? Because I've, I don't know if I've talked to Denzel about this, but we're younger. So we have still experience in life, business, et cetera, but it's hard to have real wisdom when you're this young. And of course we have some wisdom, but it's hard to compare to somebody who's 75. They're literally three times our age, roughly. Yeah. And so that's something I'm looking for as well, to learn and just learn from people's wins and losses. Right? I'd rather learn from their failures, their mistakes, than having to conduct them myself. And so I'd say learning is number one. Building relationships is number two. And that kind of ties into number three, having fun, meeting people, a bit of a getaway. There's a nice pool, nice beach. So I'm sure there'll be some free time for that. Um, but I'd say those are the three main things, just to learn, have a great time, and build relationships. That's super cool, man. I, I, I appreciate that. You know, I actually didn't write have fun in my notes, and I made sure to add that to, to my goal. So I appreciate you bringing it up because it, 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 it makes a difference when you actually write it down or you make it an affirmation almost, hey, I'm going to have fun when I come to this event. So thanks for sharing that. And the second piece about acquiring wisdom, you know, or receiving wisdom from those that are older. Uh, for those that are watching, at the end of the day, you are listening to a 25 and a 23 year old. So our perspectives, the tips that we're giving is really from our experiences and perspective. But if I was to bring in an older gentleman or an older woman, 50, 60, 70s, they might have a totally different approach when they go to, um, business events, workshops, seminars, they might be in a very f philamp oh my God, philanthropic um, you know, method of being and thinking and that you know, analysis when they're uh, uh, preparing to come to an event. They might be looking to actually give business. There are some people that you go to events and they are so prepared to pay people money for a particular service. So if you have a particular business and you connect with enough people, chances are, you know, someone might say, hey, I'm looking for this. And you say, hi, my name is Denzel. I do that for a living. Uh, you can look at my work here and maybe we can have a conversation after the event or maybe tomorrow, come to dinner with me, come to lunch during the break. We could chat more about that. And that's very authentic. So thanks for sharing that. One thing I wanted, to, I wanted to go to the comments real quick. Uh, Damian Walton uh, just said that he's booking his uh, ticket now. So I guess he just confirmed that you can still buy tickets, which is great. So it hasn't fully sold out yet. And uh, Damian, if you don't mind, you know, uh, send Alex or myself, get, get in contact with us via you know, email or Instagram, whatever it is, before the event. Matter of fact, download the Vault Conference app. They have an app for the whole entire event. And put your contact information in and you can find myself, possibly Alex, on the app. And uh, you, we can actually you know, connect with each other and message within the app, so that'll be pretty cool. So be sure to do that if you do actually book the ticket and, and come because I'd love to meet you, especially if you're a subscriber, you're you know, live with me right now on a topic that is not typically my main uh, uh, topics that I cover. 
obviously there's only roughly 20, 25, 30 people that have tuned in so far. So, you know, I, I totally get that. That is, this may not be relevant to most of my audience. So with that being said, Alex shared his goals. Now I want to share my goals for the Vault Conference specifically. I am, and they're very technical because I've attended so many events that I've formulated my own strategy. I'm in a position where money's not an issue in terms of going to the event and having the time of my life pretty much in at you know a, a business workshop you know outside of personal relationship and family and friends and stuff but when it comes to business workshops this is one of the the few things that I get to do on my own and it really helps me grow as a man grow as a business owner grow as an individual make some great relationships uh, with people genuine uh, I, I always like connecting and learning from married people that have been married for 20, 30, 40 years. Love talking to people like them. Uh, I, honestly, I love talking to people that are like my clients. Most of my clients are double my age in the neighborhood of like 40 to 55 and up. And I know I'm an old soul, so I just connect really well to people that are older than me that have really, really good perspective on, on life. They've, they've been through some challenges. They've been through some obstacles, you know, and I, I can pick up so much from that. Alex mentioned about, you know, learning from other people's failures. That's worth a $700, $1,000, $2,000 ticket to just get that one insight, not even including the speakers, like just getting an insight. Oh, it's amazing. So with that being said, my goal uh, number one is connect with somebody that sells term life insurance. Um, I, I, I would like to connect with uh, an organization that I can build a relationship with, uh, preferably someone I can, you know, meet in person, have a conversation, see where that goes. Collaborate with a business consultant uh, or coach, someone technical with a very detailed process on building a business and scaling. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for someone that has a, like a PDF doc layout entire process to help somebody start a business, look at the cost, scale it, become profitable, have an exit strategy, long-term strategy for creating a business and 10Xing your income. Very interested in somebody that does that. Um, I'm looking to also find other content creators that I can potentially, you know, um, have some kind of collaboration like this on my channel or on their channel or other financial people that host financial workshops, financial seminars for maybe universities, maybe the military, maybe the fire department, the police department. I'm very interested in dedicating my time to talking to like a group of people that are in one particular career. Like for example, being able to go to a police precinct and talk to like 50 cops about their money, how to manage it, you know, release that stress so that they can perform well at their jobs because their life is at risk. They're, they're, they're risking their lives every day, just like a fireman risks his life every day his or her life every single day when they run into burning buildings. So I'm, I'm looking to make that connection locally. I would prefer to start locally. And so being that this event is local, I can cater my goal to that specifically where maybe I might come across a firefighter or a police officer or a retired vet, military, that can open the door to get me into having some kind of catered workshop for police officers or firefighters or military. Those are the three categories that I preferably would, would like to serve in. I feel like that's the, the best way I can give uh, to people like that that put their lives on the line every day that are making average American income salaries, if that. So it would be great to connect with people like that and uh, have fun. I just added that. Have fun and acquire wisdom. Those are my goals 
for the Vault Conference. And if I just so happen to get cross paths between back Patrick Bet David to shake his hand, I, I'm, I'm gonna get a little starstruck. Uh, I've done that with Grant. I'm like, uh, 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 hello, Grant. Like, I've been very starstruck sometimes. I gotta work on that because <laughs> it's, it's so cool to see these people in person. And whenever I've, I don't know if you, Alex, dealt with this, but some of the times when I've connected with clients in person, I mean, their, their smiles are from ear to ear. Like when I meet them, I'm like, I'm just a regular dude, you know, just makes videos on YouTube. And they're like, no, man, you changed my whole entire life. My God, my, my, my wife, we're both in alignment. We haven't been in alignment about money in the last 10 years. I'm like, I did that? Wow, that's so cool. Um, but yeah, anything else? We're going to wrap it up here, Alex, and I'm going to close the, the clubhouse, and I'm just going to stay live on YouTube and go into my velocity banking questions. For some of the people that are here, I might have seen some. But yeah, any any closing remarks? Anything you'd like to share? I mean, at this point, I think we covered it all. I'm glad you mentioned the have fun part. I'm glad we you know mixed that in there. But yeah, for me, I'm ready, really re ready for the conference. Very excited. I might even extend it a day, depending on how it's going. Like just staying Saturday night and you know leading into Sunday as well, because I think I did that one more thing. Um, you did, yeah, because I think people that are flying in, you know, they, they're probably just going to stay the whole weekend. They might be flying out Sunday night to go back to wherever they came from. Right. So I'm thinking about extending it. So I might add that in as well. But, um, besides that, thank you for having me tonight. I think, as you mentioned, it's a different topic, but I think some of your audience would appreciate it, especially those that are either already going or maybe this motivated them to actually go out and buy a ticket. So I'm excited. I'll see you next week. And yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome, man. Thanks. Have a good night, Alex. And we'll, we'll, we'll see each other soon in person. I'm so excited about that uh, for a yeah, couple days. Me too, man. Awesome, man. Enjoy the rest of your night. God bless. Talk soon. Yeah, you too. Talk soon, man. Bye-bye. Bye. Cool, cool. So I closed it out on Clubhouse, and I just want to focus on you guys now. Uh, for the 18 people watching, like I said, if you got a specific question regarding velocity banking, infinite banking, now's the time to you know, ask me a question. This was just a topic that I felt was a need to cover, especially now that we are going back into interacting with people, live events. I'm starting to see them pop up all over the US, different um, in-person events, so that's pretty exciting and just being able to put together like a little blueprint, little tips here and there on uh, how to best prepare, you know? I'm gonna look at some comments here. Let's see. Damien says, I've started the Velocity Banking and I need help maintaining it. Go ahead, drop another comment, be more specific. What, do you, what, do you, what are you struggling with? Steve said, I do not understand what is the topic of the, of the today meeting. Yeah, you probably tuned in a little late, no problem. We were just talking about the Vault Conference, a, a very big business event in person happening. Roughly 2,000 or more people are going to be there. So, and it's all about entrepreneurship and personal development, business. Very, very different from most other events that I've been to. So I'm excited about that. Charles says this is a good insight. Al says, I'm interested in getting a personalized get out of debt plan. Which of your products is best to invest in? Can I get a custom chart with the month-to-month -month subscription? Okay, so the first part of your question, I only have one service at the moment, and you've got three different options, okay? You go to my website, denzelrodriguez.com, you're gonna see the Velocity Banking Manifesto. This is a DIY course, do it yourself, right? And there's three different tiers. You can pay monthly, $19.99 a month, annually, $147, or for a limited time till the end of the year, you can actually get lifetime access to the course as well as some additional one-to-one -one consulting coaching with me and unlimited private networking events that I do within the community. You'll have access to that for life. That's something that I just added. 
as well as uh, slowly I'm, I'm rolling out this buddy system where you can potentially connect with the other kingdom citizens that are in the program already during those networking events that I hold. These are private live Zoom typical meetings that we'll, we'll get together and we'll communicate and I'll bring up a random topic or bring, you know, go deeper into velocity banking and that such. So those are the three options. All three options can earn one-to-one -one coaching with me where I can break your numbers down. We write it out, whether it's, I, I, whether I write it on a simple word doc or if there's a chart or some kind of Excel uh, sheet or spreadsheet that you personally use, we, we can you know put that together and do that. The way that I operate personally, I do not I, I don't budget personally. So I don't have spreadsheets. Um, I don't technically track um, via like an app, like my money. I don't track it via an app or a spreadsheet. Rather, I just have principles that spread my money out. For example, I give 10%, I invest 10%, I save 10%, and then I, I live under a particular percentage. I don't spend more money than that. Any money I make above it is pure free cash flow that gets put back into saving, investing, and giving. So this really helps me because when I, I don't stress about expenses, I just know that if I pay myself X, if I do the principles first, I'm not going to run out of cash. And then whatever my living is, I just maintain a certain lifestyle. I don't over exaggerate. I don't, I don't go and buy a Range Rover just because I'm making multiple six figures or Mercedes Benz or BMW. No, I, I still drive a Hyundai Tucson. It's a lease, pay three fifty four dollars a month. The car I had before that was a Hyundai Tucson 2017, which I leased, then bought out, and then I did a loan to my older sister. She pays me $200 a month, and I use that $200 to pay my three fifty four. dollars so I'm really only out of pocket 154 bucks for a brand new car that's a lease. And that's just my preference. It's just how I choose to operate. So I do not have uh, charts or spreadsheets to really offer. I only got two. Um, one is a velocity banking spreadsheet that just simply put in all your numbers so that I can see what you're working with. And then I can write it out on a piece of paper and we work through the numbers. The second thing in the course is there is a, a calculator, sort of like a velocity banking calculator, where you can put in your debt tool, put in all your numbers, when you're gonna make your chunk, and it'll calculate the, the cost of borrowing. But you still have to do um, you know, math on paper to make sure your, your numbers are adding up properly, that you're, you're doing the strategy right. So that's the approach that I take. It's DIY plus one-to-one -one coaching that you can earn by simply watching the videos in the course. And then there's private networking events where you and I, I can actually see you, you can talk, have a conversation with me, and I'll write out the numbers on the board. Because it's gonna, it's gonna hit once you've done it repetition over and over again. You're learning a concept. You're learning a, a, a get out of debt strategy like you call it. It's going to take time before it actually clicks, right? That's my approach. The alternative, another option, is you can purchase a debt elimination software, which is going to be a much higher ticket option from a DIY, okay? So if you're looking for, say, some kind of advanced spreadsheet or charts to help you keep track because budgeting is an issue for you or you, know, you have a hard time sticking to a particular lifestyle, if you don't have that, that skill 
or discipline like, like I do built up, then you need an extra tool to help you get there. And that could be a mobile app, a spreadsheet that you check in and you track you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you go to my website, denzelrodriguez.com, you go to resources, there is a tab that says debt elimination software that might run you roughly 3,500 and it does go a little bit higher depending on how much debt you have, you know? So somebody that has a million dollars in debt is gonna pay a different price. Somebody that only has $100,000 in debt. So there is a little, you know, price difference. I don't think it breaches 10,000, I'm not sure but I, th I do think it does get up there maybe six, 7,000. I think it depends on, like I said, how much debt you have. That's really all it looks at. And so it's a very, very advanced debt elimination software where you can plug in all your numbers, you can connect the bank accounts, and it will tell you what debt to pay off in which order, and it'll tell you the exact date and time to pay that debt. So you put in all your numbers, your income, how you get paid, right? Whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, semi, monthly, whatever it is, daily even. You put in all the days that you get paid, your expenses, bills, the due dates, interest rates, everything gets plugged in. Every single number gets plugged in into that debt elimination system. And then it'll work its algorithms and it will tell you the fastest guaranteed way to pay off all your debt. And they guarantee the date that you'll be debt free, which is pretty cool. So they, they guarantee that if you follow the, the software, you'll be debt free in this time, right? And so Velocity Banking can get plugged into the system, not necessarily right away, Does you have to actually understand velocity banking in order for the software to work properly. So there is that little disadvantage. But if we're just talking debt snowball, debt avalanche, it will tell you the fastest way to pay off debt, period, right? So there's that option, you can look at that. And another option would be to go to like maybe VIP Financial, Matthew Pilmore, great guy, he does have different tiers. I think for the most part, he's got a great cash flow cruncher spreadsheet that's pretty phenomenal. I've had a lot of clients actually use it as their spreadsheet when they give me their numbers. So he's great. Uh, Mike Adams, YouTube channel called Think Wealthy with Mike Adams. He does, he's got a DIY course and he'll do consulting one-to-one. -one. You pay him an hour, and I think you can pay for as many sessions as you want. So if that's something you're looking for is more of that hand-holding approach, maybe that can work for you as well. So those are the options that I know so far about, you know, velocity banking and that such. Um, let, me see, let me go back to what the question was, make sure I answer it properly. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, can I get a custom chart? Yeah, so not in my program, I don't have a custom chart, but there is a spreadsheet that I had a client make and you can simply download it and you learn velocity banking from the videos and you're able to plug in your numbers and it'll help you move forward from there. Yo Dita says, appreciate you a lot. Jaquita, thanks for pointing out the use of principles in budgeting. You're a great example of the standard of excellence in the kingdom. Thank you very much. What a powerful comment you made. You know, that's a very controversial thing, by the way, when I say I don't budget, because almost every financial coach, advisor out there says you need to budget, right? It's very important. Now, I don't disagree with that. I, I don't. Some people need to budget. Others may not. And like I said, m me, when I'm doing my numbers, I know my numbers like this, right? You ask me any question about my numbers, I'm gonna get it because I've, I've memorized it. I've, I, this is my life, this is what I do for a living. I'm around numbers a lot. So I have that skill built up in advantage, but then taking it a step further to make my life simple 
so that I can perform the best with my clients is I do not budget. It's a waste of time for me because I have a principle. I say, no matter what amount of money comes in, 10% give, 10% save, 10% invest. So 30% of my income is gone. I do not see it, right? Now I'm left with 70%, okay, of my income left. Now, for me personally, no kids, I'm not married, I, I live with family, I have an office space that I pay for right here and I've got a lot of expensive equipment, so I have different insurances and whatnot. But I live a life as if I was still making my salary, that's a lie. I am living the, what I was making. Back in 2018, I had a 35K a year salary. So now in my personal life, personal bills, personal expenses do not exceed more than 35, 40K a year, right? And I've got it written down because I just know the certain bills and I can give you down to the T. In my personal and business, I spend $9,302.49 a month, okay? So 9302, call it, round it up, call it 9,500 a month. And whenever I show you my numbers, I always say what? I spend 10,000 a month, right? So I'm rounding up, I overestimate <clears throat> on expenses, I underestimate income, I underestimate cash flow, right? So 9,500 a month times that by 12, 114,000 a year. If I went off the 10K number, that's more like 120,000 a year that I personally will spend in, in personal business, uh, personal expenses and business expenses, right? So I'm not living like I make a ton of money. Although in my particular situation, yeah, I'm very blessed making all this money as a young kid and I just follow these principles. I never violate the principle. I cannot. If I violate the principle, the principle violates me. And then now I'm in an issue. I'm in a, I'm in a problem. So when you're in a kingdom, when you're operating in the kingdom, there's, there's protocols, there's rules, there's etiquette, there's values, there's ethics, there's morals, all of that. And, you know, we all have our weaknesses. We have our strengths. I choose to focus more time on the strengths and then I allow the weaknesses to get dragged by the strengths because the, the strength that I have is going to help me overcome the weakness that exists, the holes, the vulnerabilities. If I spend too much time beating myself up on the, on the weaknesses, well, then I'm neglecting the strengths and now the strengths decrease and now, oh, now I'm in a pickle. So when it comes to money, my weakness is like mobile apps, budgeting, um, tracking numbers. So I'm like, I am not going to give myself a headache with that. I'm just going to live a certain way that does not breach the expense that would put me in a position to violate the principles that I established in my kingdom. Does that make sense? Hopefully that's valuable to you. Uh, let's see. Stevie, the federal student loans have compound interest, question mark. Uh, yes. Is it better to wait until the end of January to start paying it? I don't think I understand the question. So I, I think maybe you forgot to put that your student loans are in forbearance maybe and they don't pick up till January. So if there's no payments required, so let's say you're in a situation 
where you've got student loan debt, and because of the current environment that we're in, you're not being charged interest, and there's no payment required, it's in forbearance, right? Or, or it's just deferred till January or March 2022, or however long they keep extending it. If you have other debts that are charging you interest and are requiring monthly payments, I would allocate my cash flow to attack that if the goal is to become debt free, pay off your debts. Well, then I rather focus attention over there because I can potentially get rid of debts over here, increase cash flow to then come back to the student loan to wipe that out with more cash and my dollars are going to be more effective. So when we look at it in that sense, that could be a potential. The, the other strategy is to just debt snowball. So that means you're not looking at interest rates. You're not looking at monthly payment. You're simply putting your debts in smallest to highest and tackling each debt in that order, regardless of what the payment is, whether there is one or not one, regardless of the interest rate. On this channel, we don't typically do that. Why? Because mathematically, I can tend to beat that. Now I understand that human error, the, the, the human factor in that situation is the likelihood of them sticking to the plan. It seems that it would be easier to follow, to just be not paying attention to the interest rates, to the monthly payments, none of that's important. You just look at the smallest debt and you put it in order from smallest to biggest. You tackle the smallest one. Once that's done, you take that payment, apply it to the next one, you keep going regardless of anything else. That's a strategy. It's proven to work, has produced results. But me personally, if you're somebody like me that can read numbers effectively, you, you've got a third, fourth, fifth grade math education, you can add, subtract, divide, and multiply. If you can do that <clears throat> and practice some discipline, I don't believe you're far away from reading a couple of interest rates, understanding payments, understanding the difference between simple interest and compound interest, and running numbers to see, oh, in fact, it'd be more effective for me to tackle this high interest debt because the lowest debt is not charging me any interest right now. So I might as well apply my dollars to be more effective to mathematically get me out of debt faster. So there's those two angles and whichever way you feel is best for you, me as the consultant, as the coach is going to help you get there, right? Push you along the way with these videos. So hopefully that helps. Okay. We got 36 people watching now. I think it's funny. The minute I start talking about velocity banking and, uh, you know, actual numbers, people start tuning in. I'm like, that is so weird how, how YouTube does that. So interesting. Um, let's see. Okay. Al says, okay, great. All right. Now into the, into the cash value life insurance. <clears throat> if you use your cash value life insurance as collateral at a bank where the bank holds your policy and lends you the full cash value of your policy or a portion of it, does your policy still continue to earn interest and dividends? The answer is yes. That is the whole point, right? Because what we're doing when we do a cash value collateral loan, CVCL for, for short, when we do a cash value collateral loan, Denzel and my friend here, we've got policies. We go to a particular bank. I don't know which banks do it or don't do it. So that is a question that you would have to ask the, say a local bank in your area, or you can reach out to IBC Global if you have a policy with them already, and maybe they can guide you to banks that offer cash value collateral loans. I want to assume that the smaller banks do it, 
but I don't want to just be wrong about that. So it's better to just go to the source, get the information. But nonetheless, let's say you found a bank that offers cash value collateral loan and you can get a 4% a, a interest rate. They're going to charge you 4% from the bank. You've got 50 grand in cash value earning anywhere from 4 to 6% internally in the, in the, in the policy. That, those are the projections. Maybe the internal rate of return is more like 3 to 5%, maybe a little less. But the policy doesn't get touched. Kind of like a home equity line of credit or a secured personal line of credit. If you, if you give the bank 10K, that 10K doesn't get touched. Secured with the bank, they give you $10,000 of their money at a particular interest rate. Now, the cool advantage as a, as a business owner, let's say, you do a cash value collateral loan with the bank, they give you the 4%. Let's say if you were to take out a loan from your policy at a 6% rate, well, then it might be more beneficial to go with the bank at 4 and just keep the money in the policy earning dividends, uninterrupted interest. Now, the bank gives you what you collateralized in cash value at 4%, as a business owner, you run that money into the business and now you classify that as a taxable deduction on the interest, which is very interesting. This is something I still not have practiced yet personally, but I have spoke about it in the past. I said I was gonna do it. I ended up never doing it um, for whatever reason. I can't remember what it was. But if, if you're running numbers, it could absolutely make sense if you can not only borrow at 4%, but whatever you're doing with the money, earn a higher rate. Let's say you didn't have a business and you're just gonna do a straight up cash value collateral loan, 4%, you're not gonna get a tax deduction on, on the interest because you don't have a business, but you can mathematically earn a higher rate in some sort of investment or some sort of debt that you're paying off at a high rate, as long as there is an interest gain and a cash flow gain, then we can make sense of doing that. And it would be better because instead of borrowing at 6% inside the policy, you're borrowing at 4%. So that could be something very interesting to look at. Hope they'll, hopefully that helps, hopefully that helps. This falls first, yeah, grabs and go up. <clears throat> J. Martin, do you provide list of best banks to get HELOC loans for, from if we sign up for your, your 547 package? So he's referring to the Velocity Banking Manifesto again. The 547 is the lifetime option. So whether you sign up monthly, annual, or lifetime, all are going to have access to the same video material in the course and you can skip ahead, there's a section called Recommended Credit Unions and Banks, right? And I go state by state. I have not covered all 50 states, nowhere near it. But the videos that I have done, not only am I naming banks, the interest rates at the time and stuff, but I'm also giving you the parameters. I'm giving you the, the questions to ask, the steps on how to go about qualifying banks. So there's that section, recommended credit unions and banks. Then there's another section called all about the line of credit, how to get one, questions to ask, credit score needed, all the pregame work needed to obtain what you need. And in those videos, I've named some banks. And then there's another section called Velocity banking scenarios where real case studies all over the U.S. where you'll hear me mention the bank, the institution, the state that they're in, the amount of credit limit they got, what type of debt tool it was, the interest rate, how we chunked, all that stuff. It's, it's, it's in chronological order and that has been very effective because it doesn't cost as much. Now, if you were looking for an alternative, if you're like, eh, don't like it, Denzel, I need a list. 
I need a list, right? If that's you, you might want to reach out to a YouTube channel, look up a YouTube channel called Replace Your Mortgage. They have a service. I think it might be in the neighborhood of $3,000 and up. I might be incorrect about, but I'm definitely in the right neighborhood, around three grand, maybe a little higher. And they will provide you with a curated, professional built list of banks that offer debt tools to do mortgage acceleration, velocity banking, what they call it. They call it replace your mortgage, mortgage acceleration. It's another word for velocity banking. And so you can pay that. It's obviously a high ticket, right? You're paying quite a bit of money. Not your average American doesn't have three grand sitting around or more for that matter. So you got to make that decision for yourself. You want to go ahead and do that. So you've got the DIY way, my way, right? Do it yourself. You even got the free way. I mean, my goodness, just go on my channel and go to the playlist. There's a playlist called Velocity Banking Scenarios. And you can go through that whole thing and, uh, you know, see which state I'm in and which case study. And if it relates to you and you're like, oh, you mentioned this bank, you mentioned that bank, you mentioned this bank, that bank. So honestly, you can get it for free, which is going to take you time. Time is money. You do it yourself in a curated way via a course, video material, some one-to-one -one coaching to help you along the way. Or three, pay top dollar, get a list, replace your mortgage is the only company I know that has a, a qualified, curated, professional list of banks that will offer you these types of debt tools, PLOCs, HELOCs, you know, special credit cards and that such. Is there any credit cards with no credit check you recommend? I would reach out to Brittany Green, okay? She's got a YouTube channel. If you look in the description below, you'll see her name um, or you'll see something, repair your credit, right? And, uh, she would be very helpful to answer that question. I don't know. I'll just keep it at that. I don't know the answer to that. We got 39 people in the house. We got 21 likes. For the people that haven't liked the video yet, if you don't mind, hit the like button. Have you received value? If you received value from this video so far and what we've covered on Vault Conference, couple of Q&A questions with Velocity Banking, hit the like button. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And I will continue to produce more live Q&A videos just like this. Have a ton of fun with you guys and connect. So yeah, to answer that, so yeah, if you look, it says personal credit repair and there's a link below that. It'll take you to a site where you'll see Brittany Green. You can reach out to her, go to her YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure she may have answered that question in the past. Let's see. Patrick Bet David just did a vault conference. Um, no, um, so that was different. I think he yeah, he did a he did a conference in I think Vegas with uh, a company called PHP Agency. It's like a life insurance company. So that was a private event. I think the only way to go there is you have to be an agent. I think to attend that event. I'm not sure. This. Vault Conference is for, it's open to all business owners from all over the world, pretty much. People coming from different countries to be here. So that, that is a little bit different. From what I understand, I don't know if they called it Vault over there for the Vegas event, but I know the Vault Conference, if you look that up, it'll be the one in South Florida at the Diplomat uh, Hollywood area by Hilton. I love Hilton, and that's it. Always receive value from your videos. Thank you. Yep, awesome, awesome. So for the 35 or so plus people watching, are there any other questions that's on your mind that you need some clarity on? Put it in the comment now. If not, we're going to close it out here. And to uh, just give you some you know, updates we earlier, if you didn't, if you were tuning in a little later now, 
we were talking about the vault conference and how to prepare for success and really the, the intention when you go to in-person networking events, business events, seminars, workshops, whatever it is, have no sales agenda, build relationships, look the part, you know, dress the part. You know, I definitely won't be wearing these weird shirts that I wear on YouTube. These are super comfortable. Uh, some people have asked me what type of shirts I wear. It's by a company called Buttercloth. You just type that in, Buttercloth. And they've, had, they've got all these fancy uh, short sleeve and long sleeve collar shirts. They are so comfortable, can't even tell you. And um, they're different. So it, it helps with, you know, when I'm making these videos, it's, it's just me and you talking, right? Having a conversation. Um, I don't tend to wear suits when I, I've never done that yet in my videos. My friend Steve Parisi, guy's always wearing a suit, always looking sharp. The only time you're gonna see me in a suit is at these types of events when I go network or if I'm going to a wedding, you know, which I've still not been to a wedding yet. But uh, typically when I go to these business events, that's when I bring out the tailor-made, you know, custom shoes, the expensive watch, you know, all, all the, you know, bells and whistles to look the part, dress the part. Because like Alex was saying earlier, as young guys, we got to use all of the resources, right, to make a good impression. Because the thing that we lack is what? Experience and wisdom. We don't have a whole lot of that because we haven't been on planet Earth that much, right? Now, as long as we keep a level head and stay humble and be willing to learn and not think we know it all, that helps us acquire new wisdom and good experiences with other people, right? Yeah, so yeah, where do you get your cool shirts at? Yeah, it's called Buttercloth again. Just type that in, Buttercloth. Google it. Um, yeah, these shirts are phenomenal. They're not cheap, but they're phenomenal, right? It probably cost you $100 per shirt, if that. Might be a little more. Unless you get like a sale or something, you probably get it for like 80 or 90. But yeah, these, these are not cheap by any means. And again, I didn't start wearing these till after I got a hold of my finances, right? And started managing my money right, producing profits and that such. Any other questions? Now is the time. I'm not seeing any. I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds because I know there's a, about a 15 second delay on that. And let's see. Uh, so yeah, the vault conference, September 1st to the 4th. Okay. I'm going to be going to Austin, Texas, September 21st to the 26th for uh, FinCon 21. Look that up. I'll be there. If you're in a neighboring state, or you live in Texas, you want to meet me in person over there, that would be a great opportunity. If you do attend the FinCon or Vault Conference, get in touch with me before the event so we can set up a time to meet each other and I can bring a gift. Okay, Kingdom Protocol states I got to bring a gift. So I always like to bring gifts whenever I meet other Kingdom citizens, other clients that uh, uh, come, but I can only bring that gift if I know you're coming. So I usually always like to just have gifts on me when I travel, uh, but I also don't want to run out of gifts either. So with that being said, definitely notify me in advance if you're planning on coming to South Florida for the Vault Conference 2021 or FinCon 21 later September. And then next month in October, I'll be in Orlando October 15th to the 16th or 17th. There's another convention going on with a company called United Financial Freedom and they sell a debt elimination software that can potentially over the next few years can make all of the work that I do somewhat obsolete, right? What I mean by that is as their product continues to improve and get better and as new generations 
the, the younger generations get older and older and they grow up in technology, there, there is going to be a decrease in people that write things down and whiteboards. I do foresee that the future wise, everything going digital, technology, spreadsheets, charts, and that such, like the questions I've been getting you know, asked. So I like to be aware of that because majority of my clients love the whiteboard. Most of you love the whiteboard. You don't like the, you know, the Word doc or when I share my screen and have digital numbers and spreadsheets, most of my audience doesn't like that. Reason for that, most of you guys did not grow up around technology. So you're 45 and up, you didn't grow up, grow up around that. You grew up around this. Write it down, write it down, write it down. Well now, younger generations, type it, type it, type it, speak it, speak it, say it. It's faster than writing. Why write? Speak it. Take notes. Much better. Faster, efficient. So that's a very interesting company to be aware of. Let's see. So I understand that Nelson Nash says, don't be afraid to pay premiums to build your bank. What is your percentage that you hold in your life insurance? So one thing to understand with the Nelson Nash model, if you read the book, um, I want to say between Nelson Nash and those that continue to follow under the Nelson Nash Institute, all the infinite banking practitioners that practice IBC under him, have this uh, goal to have roughly all of their income running through cash value life insurance, which I think is possible but not in the beginning. Like, I, it's very, uh, I would say, risky to try and dump all of your cash when you originally come across IBC with your first or even second policy. I don't think it's wise, especially if you have a high premium and then you can't afford it one year because you put all your money in the first year. And so you didn't strategically map out how the hell am I going to keep paying 50, 60, 70, 80 grand a year into a policy, right? If I don't even save that per year, if I don't even cash flow that per year, what, what is my, am I going to, you know, keep trying to finesse with velocity banking and credit cards and debt? which is all fine and dandy. I do it on my channel. I lay it out. But if you really pay attention, I never go long term with it. Not one case study you'll see me go long term with borrowing and leveraging debt to fund a life insurance policy to maximize the, the amount of money you get into life insurance. You'll never see me do that for a long period of time. Because in my mind, Eventually, I want you to 10x your income so that you have too much cash flow coming in that you no longer need to debt leverage. You can just simply fund because that's the position that I'm in now. I've got uh, money going into life insurance. The percentage is, let's do the math. I think now. The number is I've got 85,000 a year that goes into uh, paying cash value life insurance, right? My income does fluctuate. So roughly 25% of my income goes into cash value life insurance. Now, in 2020, I had a very big year, so it was less than 25%. It was probably like 18%. But if I average, say, 250K a year times that by 25%, that's 62,500. See if I do 300 times 25, 75,000. So, yeah. 
If I do anywhere, if I average anywhere from three to 350K, uh, roughly 25% of that is in the neighborhood of 70 to 80 grand. So I've got 85,000, which is less than 25% of my income that's going into life insurance. So if you're like, well, why not put more than Zelle? Why not keep going more and keep and get another policy? And I'm like, what about crypto? And what about stocks? And what about real estate? And what about cold hard cash? And what about gold and silver? And my HSA and my Roth and other qualified plans? Like, what about just having cash in the business to, to run and operate? To an extent, I run certain things through the cash value for personal and business, but it's going to take time for me to put more and more money into cash value life insurance. So the third policy that I'm going to get on myself is going to be paying in probably a hundred grand a year. But me personally, I want to get to a point where I can pay that hundred straight up cash and then leverage it how I want to. And to be able to do that with my eyes closed, like through passive income, maybe, because I'm already putting in 85 grand a year. Let me do that for a couple of years. And once I build the rhythm, I build the habit, I build the culture. Well, then, yeah, we can start increasing that uh, more and more. With the Nelson Nash model, as far as I'm concerned, some, not all, some try to get you to put damn near all your income flowing through the policy, borrow it, pay off debts and make money and stuff. And I get it, but it's a bit out of my comfort zone. So I just don't do it. I do what I know I can do with my eyes closed. What I mean by that is my cash flow could cover it per year. I don't have to borrow to fund it. I don't have to do any fancy schemes with borrowing and whatnot. I get the whole leveraging part. That's what this whole channel does. At the same point, I'm also being conservative, effective, efficient, running numbers, saying, hey, am I willing to take this amount of risk? So I, I hope that helps, Terry, in terms of my uh, percentage-wise. I prefer to 25%. I don't typically breach that. And I want to do that consistently for five to seven years, maybe 10 years before I add more and more money. Can you get credit limit increase, personal line of credit without a credit inquiry? I don't think so, but uh, my friend Brittany Green could probably answer that. Every time we apply for credit, our credit score gets ran. It's either gonna be a soft or a hard inquiry, as far as I'm concerned. Watson says, love the whiteboard. Will you be in Houston anytime? Not as far as I'm concerned, nope. No opportunities there, no speaking engagements uh, going on over there. I, I'll be in Austin, uh, Texas, September 21st to the 26th. I don't know how close Houston from Austin is, so um, if you live in Texas personally, that's a huge state, I get it. But if you wanna make the drive to Austin, um, that's where I'll be and we can hang out have a drink you know talk all that good stuff Terry says thank you awesome so we are gonna close it out here I've had a ton of fun with you guys talking about the vault conference gonna be doing more in-person events can't wait to just start networking with people again and interact and shake a couple hands and
looks like the audio went out. I don't know why. I don't know why. All right. <clears throat> so that sucks. Something's wrong with my audio. I tell you, man. I tell you. Thank you for being so patient. I really appreciate it. You guys are so patient with me. Always helpful. I love it. I, I can never uh, uh, go wrong with you guys. I can never go wrong. So essentially what occurred, either this thing died, which I'm pretty sure it did because this one's still alive. That's why when I looked down, I was like, no, I'm still going. Then I looked at the other one. It died. So technology, right? That can be an issue. So I think uh, wherever I cut out, I basically was just wrapping it up, just saying thank you. I appreciate your time. You guys are always diligent, learning from, from me and the things that I present. So I really, really uh, care for all of you. For those that are clients, I see a lot of clients in, in the chat anyways. Um, let's keep building. Let's keep growing. Let's keep learning. Let's get out there. Let's network. Let's build that big, beautiful kingdom. If you're not a client, if you're not in the manifesto, that is what I bring to the table. That's what I can offer you to help you around velocity banking, debt snowball, debt avalanche, infinite banking, kingdom authority, uh, managing your money as a you know as a content creator. Let's say you want to start a business. Give a lot of different insight on that. If you're looking for a community, got a Facebook group, and then I got a you know private client group where you can interact with people that are roughly in the same situation that you're in, similar age, family, household in that sense. And have some fun. <clears throat> hey Monica, how are you? How you doing? Hello, sir. Good to see you. Yeah, the sound's back on. Okay, yeah. Y'all are so helpful. Immediately when the sound went out, I saw the comment. Da -da -da -da, no sound, no sound. So helpful. Because I would have went, you know me, I would have kept going on talking to nobody. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. We're going to close it out here. God bless everybody. And we shall be talking soon. God bless. I remember you saying, hey, I know something's there like with this policy design as you were digging into it really from the consumer side. I guess you could say there wasn't a big amount of creators on YouTube that were focusing on velocity banking, personal finance, things like that. It, like you said, it doesn't matter who you get the information from. As long as you get the information and you take action, <clears throat> that's all that we ask at the end of the day so that you can build wealth for your family and your, your family's family. Hey, here's a taste. Now, if you're feeling it at all, then go take a deeper dive. Go start doing your research. Start listening and learning about this whole concept.